because this is Canada and it's the middle of the winter, I thought a nice cold challenge uh, torture test would be appropriate for this gun. Um, I don't really want to do it because this is my one of my really good rifles. It's really expensive, but I'll do it for you guys. Alright, so that's it there. Uh, we just dug it out. I think I need to get some snow and stuff like that into here. Actually, I think it's already handled that for me. Uh, as you can see, it's definitely, definitely buried in the snow. This is worse than like a mud test because this is just absolutely everywhere. I want to make sure that there's no barrel obstructions first because uh, it doesn't matter what you're shooting. The grill obstruction is no bueno. I do have an obstruction in my chamber right now, so I don't feel safe shooting this. I'm just going to clear this obstruction really quick and then we can get uh, get going. So as you can see, uh, there's still lots of snow all over the bolt and stuff like that. I did clear the obstruction out of the chamber. Uh, there's a little bit of an ice plug inside of there because uh, it was hot and then we threw it in the snow. So some ice uh, froze in there. So that wasn't safe, so we had to clear that, but uh, everything else is untouched, so there's still lots of snow all over everything. Oh yeah, lots. Alright. Nope, no fire. As you can see, it's not actually going into battery there. Uh, it does have a rotating bolt similar to a AR-15. Uh, it uses three big lugs instead of 2,000 lugs like the AR-15 has, which is an official number. Let's just see exactly what's going on here. Oh yeah, so the whole chamber is completely packed in with snow right now. So even the forward assist that the XCR does have won't engage. So all I'm doing is just caulking it, trying to clear out some of the, uh, the snow and ice that's in there. Yeah, as soon as I put a round in the chamber, it's not going to close. So it's actually ice in the chamber, it's not a malfunction of the firearm itself. There's a lot of ice in there. And close. Okay, so let's... See if we can get this thing to fire. Come on, baby, don't let me down. Nope, so again, it's still not chambering around. You can see there, just like a AR-15, that the bolt carrier and the bolt's not fully forward. Forward assist is not doing anything to help the situation. So there you have it, folks. Canada 1XCR0. We'll get back to this later. All right, so now that we're inside, we'll take a look at some of the features of this gun. I'll talk about what I'd like, what I think is okay, and what I think is absolutely terrible about this gun. So again, we have here the XCR-L from Robinson Armament. L stands for light. There's two versions, the light, medium. Medium comes in 308 only. The light comes in 556, 762 by 39, and 6.8 SPC. So working from the buttstock forward, I'll go over some of these features and uh, I'll just kind of give you guys some of the highlights about this gun. So the stock here on the rear is the fast stock. There's different features. This one here is probably the best one that they come out with. Has adjustable cheek riser. So you just pull it off and you can set it to different heights. I actually prefer mine in the highest setting. It's kind of closer to an AR-15 I found. The stock is also adjustable for length of pull. And it's nice and lightweight too. There's not a whole lot of extra material on the back there. It doesn't look like an Ugg boot like some of the other guns out there. And one of the nice features about this is that it's a collapsible. And when it collapses, it actually clears the chamber and it clears all your fire controls, which is really nice. Uh, one of the things that I'm not a big fan of is the fact that I have to pull up on it to release it for full extension. So having it collapse is great if you're in a confined space. However, if you really need to extend it in a hurry, 
you have to think that you have to do that extra step. So there are some stocks out there where you can just freehand it open. This one takes one extra step, which is not the greatest thing I found. And I wish there was a way where I could make this uh, mechanism here a little bit faster for extending the stock. Uh, moving forward, it's got fully ambidextrous uh, fire selector, so left and right side, which is a really nice feature, especially uh, for being left-handed. The mag release is also ambidextrous, has a big paddle on the, the left side of the rifle, and then your standard AR-15 push button on the right side. The bolt release is actually ambidextrous, which is a really nice feature. However, I found that there's been times where I've hit the mag release and I've also hit the bolt release at the same time. So when I'm inserting my new magazine, I've accidentally hit the bolt release and then I've had to recharge uh, the bolt just because the bolt was forward when it would have, should have been locked in the rear position. Having said that, I do like the fact that it is ambidextrous and I think that's more just uh, my issue than most people and it's something that I'm gonna have to work around. The trigger is pretty good. It's not the same as an AR-15 trigger. If you were to open it up and look, it's a little bit different. All the springs and everything are on the left-hand side as opposed to centered down uh, on either side. So the brass deflector here is removable. This is so that if you're using different cartridges, you can set it up specifically for the cartridge you're shooting. However, I found that no matter what cartridge I'm shooting, whether it be 5.56, 7.62, or 6.8, I just leave this one on there and it works just fine. I'm not going to eat brass, and that's shooting left-handed. The bolt is a rotating bolt three lug. It's supposed to be far superior than the AR-15 bolt. It's a lot bulkier, and the fact that it's not gas impingement, it's actually long piston system, same as an AK-47 is really nice. I'll open up the gun in a few minutes, and I'll show you what, what I mean. One of the cool features about this is the removable barrel. There's actually just this one screw here. I just pull, um, take the gun out of battery and I can loosen this bolt and then the whole barrel comes off and that's all that's really involved with swapping out calibers. Uh, obviously you have to change out the bolt itself but the carrier and the piston stays all the same. So this rifle is one of the older versions. It has a 1913 rail. The new ones have key mod and the newest version also has a full length front rail. One of the things that I always wish that this rifle had was a full length rail and I'm glad to see that they've actually added that on for this year. The gas uh, cylinder rides above the barrel just like any other uh, AR or uh, sorry AK-47 system and it's also removable for cleaning for uh, carbon. So I'll show you guys how you take the barrel off. It's really simple. Just take the gun out of battery and lock the bolt to the rear. The barrel actually uh, has a dimple in it and then this bolt here blocks off the barrel from moving just with this little dimple right there. You can see there's the gas block. The gas block has six different positions. There's uh, suppress uh, suppression if you're going to run a suppressor and then there's one to five depending on what cartridge you're using or if you're having any gas, gas issues. The front block here has a dovetail. Uh, it looks like you're supposed to have a front sight that's mountable to that. I've yet to find one, and it's something that I would really like to have. I'm thinking maybe I'm gonna have to find a SCAR uh, front sight and see if I can get it to fit on here. The front of the barrel here has a standard uh, two-port muzzle device. It's not the greatest one out there. There's much, much, much better um, muzzle brakes out there. I would probably uh, swap this out as my next upgrade for this gun but I mean today set, having the gas setting set to one which is the lowest um, I found it fairly effective I didn't have an issue hitting the target so as I said here here's the cylinder it's got some ports this helps uh, remove some of the gas from the system so the sites that come with these are the Midwest Industries these are the flip up sites uh, there's nothing fancy about them but they do work and I've been happy using these with uh, iron sights. Right now I just have a spark on here. I threw on the cheapest sight I could find just to see how it would run and it's already dented here. Uh, Vortex has a great warranty so I'll probably send it back to them and see if they can just replace that part. On the side here has a side non-reciprocating charging handle. This means that it's not going to move back and forth while you're shooting. This is one of the features that I really like about this gun. Other uh, companies that have a side charging handle, they are reciprocating and also if you catch it on something it could put your gun out of battery. So doubles as a forward assist and uh, 
it's actually a really, really simple system. Uh, the handle itself is plastic. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody out there already has a metal version or aluminum, something a little bit more beefy. But uh, I have absolutely no issues with it. I've never had an issue other than today doing the snow test um, when we had the obstruction in the chamber as far as, as having it go into battery. So for stripping this gun down, it's really simple. There's this button here on the side, you just push it forward and it comes apart and it has a front pivot pin just like an AR-15. If you look in the middle here, that's the trigger and there's the hammer and there's the pin right there that, I don't know if you can see that, that I'm moving up and down, that's your bolt stop. So the trigger is actually quite nice, it's nice and light, it's not super heavy, it's not gritty, it's smooth. And then there's a uh, buffer right here, just this little rubber plug and you can buy extra uh, plugs from Robinson Armament. There's not a whole lot to say about the uh, internals for the gun, it's different than an AR-15 like I said, but Super simple, all the springs are on the side, and uh, yeah, it works, I like it, it's not a bad trigger at all. Inside here, I'll just take out all the guts. You have your piston system, so like I said, it's a long stroke piston, it means that the whole piston is a big long piece as opposed to a smaller uh, piston. You have your bolt carrier and your bolt. So this is the piece that you have to swap out when you're changing calibers, that's just because the different uh, calibers have a different size cartridge obviously and uh, your bolt carrier so there's not a whole lot to it it strips down super easy easier than an AR-15 which is something that I really like inside here instead of having the uh, extractor on the uh, the bolt face it's all actually built into the receiver and there's two little screws that hold it in place earlier models were plagued with issues with these they were actually falling out of the gun I know that uh, Robinson Armament has done a lot of work to fix that problem, and they have. The other issue that I had with this gun was with the bolt stop. Uh, this is a really small bolt stop in here, it's not a lot of meat to it, and what was happening was the bolt was actually grinding it down, it was losing meat, and then it wouldn't work at all. I contacted them and they sent me a new one, uh, same model, and they also sent me the next generation, which was a lot bigger and beefier, and they said I just had to drill out the center so that it would fit that piece. I haven't gotten around to it, but uh, once this one starts failing, I'll do the same thing. So if you're looking into getting one of these things, you're obviously not going to be getting a rifle that's three or four years old. Like this one is, you'll be getting a newer rifle with all these upgrades already built into it. So that's it for the overview for this gun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys have any questions, make sure you comment below. I'll get back to you or I'll see if Robinson Armament can answer those questions for you. All right, so we got the gun back and running, we hope. We took a tactical uh, tree branch. We cleared out some of the snow that was in the chamber. No tools necessary, just what Mother Nature gave us. So hopefully now, the gun will work. Uh, So, we do have it back up and running. I had one obstruction. Uh, may have been with the gas system here. I have it turned all the way down uh, to setting one. It goes from one to five. Uh, and then there's also one more su uh, suppression setting, which is below one. So it's at the very bare minimum for, for the gas. Uh, but after having tons of snow packed into it, uh, everything being absolutely frozen, the gun still worked. However, uh, I do believe a scenario in that uh, where I kick the snow onto it, stuff like that is totally possible. Maybe kicking snow into the chamber, not so much, but definitely having a gun fall into the snow in winter combat, definitely possible. So it gives you an idea of how realistic some of these uh, tests can be. Uh, so I would actually probably give that a, uh, not a pass, but like a 49.5. Uh, somewhere in the middle gray area there because that was a pretty weak pass if it was a pass so uh, XCR is not a big fan of snow Canada 1 XCR 0